Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Bare Necessities podcast. In this week's episode, we will be reviewing Cam Newton to the Patriots and discussing whether or not the Bears made the right decision with sticking with Nick Foles over all other quarterback options on the market. Following that, we're just going to talk a little bit about how the NFL is adjusting to some changes thanks to COVID-19, and we're going to round out the show by just giving some of our thoughts on that. But before we get into the show, we have a couple quick updates we want to give you guys. Uh, we apologize that this week's upload schedule is a little bit wonky. Uh, we're going to be going to a strict Monday and Thursday upload schedule uh, starting next week. This week, some things just kind of got pushed off because of uh, competing schedules. But from now on, strictly Mondays and Thursdays, two times a week. We also want to let you guys know about a really exciting opportunity coming for us. Nicholas Mariano of the Chicago Audible podcast will be joining our show on the Thursday podcast. So that's not on Monday. That's the Thursday podcast. So two podcasts away. One final update before we go ahead and start the show. And Reese and I are going to be looking into how we can start doing video podcasts. So if you haven't checked out our YouTube already, go ahead and type in Chicago Bear Necessities on YouTube or Bear Necessities Chicago Bears podcast or... Just go ahead and click the link in our description of the podcast. We always have our email, our business email, and our YouTube link there as well. So thank you guys so much for once again joining into the Bear Necessities podcast. We're excited for our future, and we are excited for consistently bringing you guys new content throughout the entire offseason and into the NFL season. Enjoy the show. Okay, now do something with me. Let's try to clap at the same time. Okay, ready? Ready? Yeah. Because it's going to help me align it better. Three, two, one. Okay, that's good enough. Cool. All right. Well, well, well. Cam Newton was finally signed, and who else did it? <laughs> of course, Bill it's the Belichick. Patriots. Of course. Hello, guys. Welcome back to the Bear Necessities podcast. Uh, this is Austin, and I'm here with my co-host Reese. Reese, how are you doing this week? Pretty good. Just getting soaked in the rain, I'm trying to go <laughs> fishing. So. Yeah, I'm basically living my best life out here, but still doing well, you know, surviving. That's all I can ask. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, today, well, actually, it was yesterday. Yesterday was the day that many Bears fans, I think, were dreading. You know, the day Cam Newton was signed, we were bound to have so many questions about what we did because Cam Newton was destined to have a lower contract than Nick Foles, you know, and that's what we've kind of seen reemerge in the news, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, it was bound to happen. Uh, you know, Cam Newton, someone that, you know, Nick Foles got that Super Bowl win, but individual success definitely goes to Cam Newton. Definitely a lot more notable of a name. Longtime career starter for the Panthers. Uh, kind of a, a transcendent talent, too. Someone that kind of revolutionized the way football is played, made a huge mark on the league, and has the opportunity to go out and prove himself again, right? This is kind of like his chance at like a at a rebirth i think even kurt warner made a comment about that so absolutely so let's get right into it um the first topic today is cam newton signing with the new england patriots cam newton as reese said ex mvp um obviously battled a lot of injury issues this past season but gets 7.5 million on an incentive latent deal with the patriots i think it was a move that many predicted but then as time kind of went on um, people actually were considering that they might roll with jared stidham and I don't know what ended up making or uh, encouraging Bill Belichick to make this decision, but I'm having a feeling that Stidham was obviously maybe struggling in the virtual offseason or whatever. They decided to throw some money at Cam Newton, uh, which I was calling the Bears to do. $7.5 million would have fit under our cap space, and we would have had three options to choose from. Anyways, signs with the Patriots. How do you think the fit is for them, Reese? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, of course uh... – we're, we're expected. We're always expecting Tom Brady, but it was going to be a change-up mm-hmm. this year, nevertheless. I mean, but what a be- what a better person to to kind of throw in that curveball than Bill Belichick. I feel like he can form a system around anyone. I, I think that Cam Newton's going to succeed. I don't know if we'll necessarily hit the ground running. I don't know if we'll be the quickest or the smoothest tra- smoothest transition. But I can't help but to think it's going to be a success. You know, I just can't. Mm-hmm. I don't see the way it doesn't work out. The, the Patriots still have talent. You know, a lot of people have, you know, made jokes about the fact that Gronkowski went back to Tampa Bay and basically Edelman's the only one that's left, right, in New England. But 
you know, Bill Belichick, he's someone that he can squeeze talent out of just about anyone. So, and Camden's got plenty to work with. Yeah, I think what makes this pairing very like so interesting compared to other pairings is Cam Newton is pretty much the opposite quarterback of Tom Brady. You know, like Cam, like Cam Newton is, you know, he's kind of a mobile guy. Uh, he's going to make a lot of mistakes. He's not going to be the most, you know, uh, I guess precise passer or the most, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, most fuck. accurate. Accurate? No, not accurate. Um, I guess, I guess consistent passer. No, nah, what's the fucking word? Um, where you just like, you, you're, 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 you're going, you're throwing, uh, you're just moving the sticks, you know, throwing darts all efficient, the time. efficient, efficient. There we Cam, go. Cam Newton's not going to be the most efficient passer. You know, he, he isn't, he, that is not how his game is. He's more like a Mitchell Trubisky where he's kind of inconsistent, but at the end of the game, he kind of pulls it through, you know, he's got to be one of the most, uh, difficult quarterbacks to watch as a fan I'd probably say because it's kind of like you're you're so you he he makes certain games closer than they have to be but he also pulls he used to pull the Panthers through a lot more uh, than they probably should have as well I think that I don't know exactly how he's going to do what I liked about Cam Newton to Chicago is I thought that Matt Nagy was going to be able to do something creative with him and his legs and Bill Belichick I don't doubt that he can get a system around him, but I do have my concerns about you built this team around Tom Brady, right? And when you completely change the type of quarterback mold that you have, yeah, it's, it's, it's like a fresh start almost, you know, this, this is the way I look at it. I, I think Belichick goes, look what happened down in, in Baltimore with what the Ravens yeah. were able to do with John Harbaugh was able to do with Lamar Jackson and Bill Pelz was going, I can't take someone that, is athletic in their own right, you know, mm-hmm. has all the physical prowess that Cam Newton does, and I can't do it, and I can't replicate that, and then put yeah. it along with my defense that's already top tier, and you're saying that I can't contend with that. I, I think Bill Belichick is going to it's gonna be a totally different Patriots offense. I, I think, right, the personnel is might be the part that is the biggest, the biggest question mark. You know, can they get the right people in there? But they they've had they got Sony Michelle and I think a, an RPO it's with Cam pair. Newton and, and Sony Michelle that'll that'll work very well, you know. And it's just can he get it to Edelman enough? And is there going to be other receivers, other tight ends out there to, to catch the ball? You know, that's the big you know, question to me. What I'd really like for them to go do right now is go re-sign Josh Gordon. I think that would be the uh, home run move for them. Have Josh Gordon and have Cam Newton and have Sony Michelle. That that's a pretty good trio right there. I know you. I mean Edelman obviously did good with Tom Brady. I don't think Edelman's this top tier wide receiver by any means, and I don't think that uh, wh- whatever the the dude's name from uh, Arizona State from a couple years ago that they drafted. Um, yeah, I'm, I man, there's I so many there's so many receivers that go in and out of that team you know it's yeah. hard to keep track honestly yeah they, they drafted him in the first round of 2019 draft but he he didn't have the best season um I think it's an interesting fit I hope it works out for Cam Newton I I'm a Cam Newton fan I, I yeah, really am too. I like Cam Newton I wish that he was on the Bears right now but I do think he has his limitations as well I have I, to say though I will be heartbroken if Cam Newton is holding up the Super Bowl trophy by the end of the year. <laughs> yeah, I mean it would be heartbreaking if uh Cam Newton ends up lifting that you know Vince Lombardi trophy cuz it would be there's going to be so many questions of what could have been, you know? I mean the Bears I, I think, you know, bringing this back to the Chicago Bears, I think it was just that ultimately the Bears had to play it safe this offseason, right? They had to go mm-hmm. out and get someone that was going to be, you know, a little bit more predictable. Like you said, there's there's some limitations of Cam Newton. You don't know exactly where you're going to get. Of course, there is the injury question, which even Nick Foles has that injury question. I mean, he's he was knocked out for the, the basically the remainder of the season after like week 1. So, you know, all, he's all one in, Cam Newton is 1 in 9 in the past 10 games. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah. So, I mean, there was there was a, quite a few, you know, red flags with Cam Newton. You know, at the same time, though, the Bears, I think the Bears are in a position, and, and they're always a franchise that plays it safe, right? I feel like mm-hmm. the Bears always kind of play it safe in these kind of situations. I feel like in the end, it kind of ends up biting them sometimes, you know, that they never really go out there and make the bold move. 
except for when they traded for Khalil Mack, of course. And that's been one of their best moves they've ever exactly. made, period. Yeah. <laughs> Take some um, notes from that one. Yeah, right. Yeah, so I, I, I guess we're going into kind of our second topic here, which is, was Nick Foles the right option, right? That's going to be the question that we're going to be asking ourselves for a long time. And I think that Bears fans need to get over this idea that we need to solve the quarterback situation this year. I think if Ryan Pace was in the mindset that we need to solve this quarterback situation this year and whoever we ha- we get this year is going to be our quarterback for the next 10 years, then Cam Newton would make a lot more sense. Cam Newton, as far as upside goes, far exceeds that of Nick Foles. I, you know what? I can't even say that truthfully because Nick Foles won the Super Bowl. Well, I mean, what else more upside would you want than that? But Cam Newton just looks like he, the way, the way he plays is, is much more, uh, reliable and high level than I would say Nick Foles is able to play at times. Right. Um, I'm a big, I'm a big Cam Newton fan and I think that he would have been an awesome fit with the Bears. I think that we should have signed him, given him, I would have given him this deal, period. I would have, I would have given him this deal even knowing that we're already spending what like 20 million, 25 million this year on quarterbacks. I think that this is a fine deal. I think the Patriots made a great deal for him. That being said, I don't think that the Bears plan is Nick Foles. I think that Nick Foles is serving as a stopgap and we are already looking at the quarterback class next year, which Reese and I have talked about as the best quarterback class that I have ever seen since, you know, uh, I think truthfully, you can say it's the best quarterback class since the one that Philip Rivers, Eli Manning, Ben Roethlisberger has been. Yeah, you know, I right, think this real. is this is the best quarterback class we have seen in a very, very long time. And Cam, Cam Newton, he is more of a long term option. He knows as, about as much as our damn scheme. He knows less than Mitchell Trubisky. That is not a good move to go get someone with less experience than Mitchell Trubisky when he's a one year starter. Or when you're expecting him to be a one-year starter. We we went out and we got Nick Foles because we know that, you know, if we have him for one year or two years, he's going to play consistently enough to evaluate Matt Nagy. I think is a big thing as well. If you want to go check out the YouTube video that I just did on our Bear Necessities channel, I talked a little bit about what Nick Foles brings to the Chicago Bears. And one of the biggest things is consistency and experience. And that is going to be the most beneficial thing that Ryan Pace can have to get an accurate representation of the coach that he's going to have grooming his next quarterback that he's going to select. Because I do believe Ryan Pace will select the next quarterback. Yeah, I think that Nick Foles, is, we've gone over quite a few times. He does have that experience. He has that experience down the stretch, which you like to see, right? You know, he's not really phased by those high-pressure moments. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that for this Bears team, I think he's a good fit in the short term, absolutely. And and you and I have talked about that quite extensively. I mean, if Nick Foles is not your long term option, and if he is, I mean, then the Bears team they got laughed. That's a problem. Backwards. Yeah, if that's the actual case, then then we're in deep trouble. But hopefully, it's the way that you know that we see it, and that you know he'll be around for this year. You know, maybe next, and he's gonna be there, provide a little bit of experience, maybe a little bit of extra coaching because that backup quarterback or, you know, that more experienced quarterback can provide, you know, help shed some light and some of that knowledge onto the younger quarterbacks. You know, hopefully he'll do that to Mitch as well in this coming year. But, you know, hopefully they end up drafting one of these great quarterbacks next season so that they can actually get someone that's going to be there in the long term, right? Someone that actually has a future with this team because, you know, if Nick Foles is longer than here, longer, if he gets a contract extension, I'll almost be mad unless it was like completely warranted yeah. in the fact that, you know, off of complete success, you know, one 40 Super touchdown Bowl, Super Bowl win. yeah, just <laughs> winning record setting years. Because if not, then there's really no reason to bring him back because he's just, he doesn't have that many years left. He has already shown you what he can do. So anything any kind of crazy great 40 touchdown year would be completely out of the norm for him. You know, he's had some good seasons, mm-hmm. but nothing like to that level of efficiency or greatness. This is going to be, I guess, a hot take. Okay. I think Nick Foles is a stopgap quarterback, but I also think that there's about a 50-50 chance 
that Nick Foles breaks every single one of the Bears' passing records this coming season. Well, they're so shit. I mean, how can you not? Yeah, Basically, like, you're asking him to be better than Jay Cutler. You finally have a quarterback that pairs well with your coach. And having that connection, I mean, you look at, I mean, you look at guys like, uh, you know, Tom Brady, really. Tom Brady, he, he, he's damn good, right? He's damn good, one of the best of all time. But what really made Tom Brady special was how well he paired with Bill Belichick. He right. really did everything that Bill Belichick needed him to do. And that's truthfully why I'm so skeptical about his performance, uh, this, this, this coming season is that I think that his b- biggest strength was just how on, like how, how connected their minds were. You look at guys like, uh, Drew Brees and Sean Payton. Drew Brees, good, great player, but you notice how well he did when he got with a quarterback that shares the same philosophies as him in Sean Payton. He, yeah. I mean, with with the Chargers, pretty good player, but nothing like he's known as today. Um, and I think, and then you look at other players who never get that pairing, right? I think Aaron Rodgers would probably be the a player that I point to, especially early on in his career with Mike mm-hmm. McCarthy. Um, just you could tell, kind of competing ideologies at times. Maybe Mike McCarthy was a little too, uh, just not not wanting to give up as. Not, not putting a system around Aaron, Aaron Rodgers enough. And, uh, once, you know, Aaron Rodgers, if he did have a system around him earlier in his career, I think he would have had a much better career. I mean, they only have one Super Bowl with Aaron Rodgers. That's pretty sad. And I think a lot of that is thanks to Mike McCarthy. And ultimately, I just, oh, and like another example is, uh, Lamar Jackson. If Lamar Jackson didn't have a coach that was willing to absolutely, uh, make an offense around him, he would not be the, pl- he would not have won MVP last season. Yeah, it, oh, he, he'd be regarded as a complete bust if you want to yeah. be honest. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He, Lamar Jackson, again, great player, but you need to really adjust your team around him. And I think that's what Nick Foles gives to the Bears, is the Bears, they finally have the type of cohesion be- between Nagy and a quarterback. And if Matt Nagy puts together another shit show offense this season, it's all on him. Yeah, it oh, is definitely. all on him. I mean, doesn't that, doesn't it, isn't it just a testament, though, to just how poor the Bears quarterback history is I mean I feel like we get into this every podcast but isn't it just like the fact that Nick Foles could go out there perform at like a a decent decently high level you know get along understand the scheme and he could go out there and break Bears records isn't that pretty sad in a way yeah and uh, another thing that really gives me hope about Nick Foles before we get into the other quarterbacks because we are going to be going through Pretty much every quarterback that we had an option to get this episode and kind of looking back at that. But what really gives me a lot of hope for Nick Foles, look how well Chase Daniel played in specific games, right? Chase Daniel sucks, right? His physically, <laughs> he has, he has very little arm strength. He makes very poor decisions. But the one thing he did well was he knew Matt Nagy's scheme inside and out and he yeah. was confident about it. Mitch Trubisky has neither of those. He he isn't the most confident player. He hesitates a lot. He 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 struggles making those quick decisions that are absolutely necessary out of the quarterback position. Something that Nick Foles doesn't have to, have to do. I view Nick Foles as a Chase Daniels on steroids, right? Like like so like uh, someone a uh, Chase Daniels, but has arm strength, can make decisions good and consistently, and has an unbelievable postseason record in the past couple of years. Yeah, I I guess with, you know, we kind of talked about all the coaches adapting their playbook. In a way, I, you know, the question I asked myself was, was Mitch Trubisky so helpless last season there was nothing that Nagy could do mm-hmm. to help correct that ship? Or is it just Nagy's stubbornness and refusal? And I, I think that it goes a little bit both ways. I, I'm, I, yeah, I absolutely. think that Trubisky has a hell of a lot of room to grow, right? He has so many things that he could do better and adjust. But at the same time, watching Nagy call plays last season was like hitting your head against the wall. It was awful. It was... But, you know, I think what Nagy was almost trying to show was just how incompetent Trubisky was in his own, like, kind of weird way, which is kind of weird that a coach would out a player. But mm-hmm. with Nick Foles coming in, like you said, it's like bringing in Chase Daniels, who we got to see, unfortunately, on multiple, like, in the past two seasons because Trubisky's been hurt. Um, 
you know, come out there and he provides just kind of like the middle of the road games you need, like kind of just breaching a little bit over 200 yards, mm-hmm. maybe gets you a touchdown or so, but really just manages the game. And Nick Foles is going to give you that management plus some, right? Like, you know, that man- game management plus a spectacular play or two. So yeah. maybe that's just enough to push this Bears team over the top. Because honestly, they just need like above average com- quarterback play. That's really Again, all they need. Eight and eight with one of the worst offenses in the NFL is a complete testament to how much talent this Bears team has. This this Bears team is loaded with talent. It, I think, I mean, what is it? CBS came out with ranking the Bears roster as one of the worst in the NFL. That's got to be one of the most laughable takes I've ever seen. Yeah, CBS um, or ESPN, one of them. What, yeah, one of them. I'm just saying CBS probably because we just how much <laughs> shit we have to deal with from them. Yeah. Um, Jason Lock and Fora, please come on the podcast still. We are welcoming. We are welcoming you. Um, but eight and eight's pretty damn good with a really bad offense, especially in this era of the game. And I think Matt Nagy's biggest issue as a coach is that he's either all in on Mitch or he's got no hope in him whatsoever. In the beginning of the game, you'll see he'll open up the field for him. He'll he'll have some, you know, he'll try to run the offense as a whole. And the second that Mitch Trubisky is showing he's incompetent at that, what he does is he locks it down to essentially screen passes. Yeah. Oh, which God. which is the not what you want to do. No. I think the the fact you look at how other coaches use their young players, and one coach I'm gonna look at specifically is Andy Reid. Patrick Mahomes, great player. Right, but some of his passing schemes, some of Andy Reid's passing schemes for him, are some of the easiest wide open throws you'll ever see in your life. Okay, and the a big thing about Patrick Mahomes is he does a lot of things. He he rolls out a lot. You look at another another quarterback that's kind of uh, considered incompetent, Jared Goff. What does he do? Like ninety percent of the time, he does play action. He rolls out of the pocket. He reads half the field. It's half the amount of mental work. Why Mitchell Trubisky is not doing that, I don't know. It's I don't know. Bad, it's, it's bad coaching. That's what it is. I mean, that's why you have to put a certain amount of blame on Nagy because right, I think Goff and Trubisky, I, they're different. But I think they're just mm-hmm. about at like the same level of just kind of like success. I mean, not success in the right way. Like Goff's been to the Super Bowl. But of like quarterback play, quality quarterback play, I think they're around like yeah. the same area. Well, here's but, yeah. the thing: is I think Goff is more mentally incompetent than Trubisky. Right, he gets his hand held a lot by McVeigh, but McVeigh is still able to take that mental incompetence and, and just basically use Goff as a physical piece. He basically takes the mental mm-hmm. part out of it, feeds everything to him on a platter, but just really executes really great play calling. It's so that's what I mean. Honestly, the Bears could do it with Trubisky, but I think Nagy is just stubborn. Nagy wants to run the offense exactly how he sees it. You know, he yeah. wants it to go exactly how it's played out in your mind. But unfortunately, with sports, you're not given everything that you want. You know, and if you're the Bears, the Bears aren't going to give you a good quarterback. That's just how it goes. Mm-hmm. So you got to learn how to work around it. Um, you know, Trubisky's a big hurdle. I, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I can't fault that completely on Nagy, but Nagy could do a lot better in making making the game simpler for him. That's not for sure. And before we actually get into the rest of the quarterbacks, I know we're on a little bit of a tangent here, but you look at all these young quarterbacks, right? You look at Lamar Jackson. Mitchell Trubisky coming out was, was ahead of Lamar Jackson when it comes to, you know, basic quarterback play. Yep. And Lamar Jackson, I mean, I'm you know, as a passer and all of his other, you know, obviously his his legs and his other attributes physically, very good. He makes a lot of good explosive passes, but again, very easy scheme for him, very simplistic scheme. I think Lamar Jackson got one of like the historically low wonderlick scores in football. So like how it just Nagy is Absolutely to blame in this whole Trubisky process. I don't think Trubisky is as bad as we think he is. I don't. I think that he, I think that Nagy just knows nothing outside of, 
having a quarterback that knows the scheme very well. Most of the time when he was in Kansas City, he was with who? Alex Smith, a guy who Andy Reid worked with for a very, very yeah. long yeah. time. Right? He he started developing Patrick Mahomes, but he wasn't there for the the whole uh, his whole big season. He developed a quarterback, but he never had to coach it on the field. He never had a play call for a young quarterback. Yeah. And then it, when he was with the Eagles, too, he had, you know, Nick Foles with him. I, I th- It was known when he came here, too, that Nagy was not thrilled about having to deal with Strabisky. You know, his first yeah. season here, I mean, he made it do, and he ended up going 13-3, and three, so it kind of wiped that headline away but before the Green Bay game one of the big talks was basically Nagy saying that I don't really want to have to work with this guy like Trubisky's not really my quarterback of choice so right from the jump he was not really willing to give it his all with with Trubisky right from the jump yeah and I think that that's the why partially this Trubisky experiment needs to end yeah. I I think that you need to give Matt Nagy, because Matt Nagy, he has a good scheme. He held Mitch Trubisky's hand a lot in this first year. Held it a lot. Okay? He did a really good job with it in this first year. But I just think the Mitch Trubisky uh, experience needs to end because you need to give him someone who he's confident in and someone that he feels he can craft. I, Matt Nagy, he's he's a good coach. I, I truthfully believe he's a good coach, but I think he is a bit stubborn. Yeah, I think that stubbornness, the stubbornness bites him in the ass a little bit, and I think that he needs to go back. He should have done more of that hand-holding last year, and that stubbornness got in the way. And, and now if it comes to Nick Foles, he was stubborn enough last year where if Nick Foles doesn't perform for him, that puts his job on the line. So Yep. Yeah, that, that's how it all works out, though. I mean, that's why the NFL is the business that it is, and you know, you can't really afford to don't get being second chances cost all that you, time. Cost you your job. Yep. Okay, so now that we're done rambling about what exactly Matt Nagy does right or wrong, let's get back into the original topic, which was was Nick Foles the right option? We talked about Cam Newton, why maybe Cam wasn't the right option to to fully choose. Um, but there's another player that got um, a much smaller contract than Nick Foles, and that's Andy Dalton. And he seems to probably be the best argument, I would say, is because I think Andy Dalton is a pretty good quarterback. But um, I do think that Nick Foles was the better fit. What do you think, Reese? I, I think it's. T- I think Nick Foles might be the better fit right away. Than, than Andy Dalton would be because of that obvious, we just talked about the obvious scheme linkage so that mm-hmm. fits in hand in hand, right? I do think Andy Dalton though does have the potential to be a lot better uh, and you know Pat McAfee podcast listeners will probably know how much he raves about Andy Dalton and you know around draft time I was listening to quite a bit of it and I kind of I bought into it, I was drinking Pat McAfee's Kool-Aid while he was putting down I think the Red Rockets really got something in them. I think with the <laughs> Bengals, he was given a bit of a rough ride. I mean, obviously, that, that franchise is one of the poorest run in the league for sure. They have coaches doing scouting work. It, it's a whole mess. Um, so at least yeah. the Bears aren't like that. But, um, you know, I, I think that Andy Dalton could w- could easily learn Nagy's system. I don't think it's anything too far ahead of him. And, and honestly, I think that the potential would be there too. I mean, Andy Dalton... He's been in the league for quite a while now, but unlike Nick Foles, if you get Andy Dalton, let's say he takes this year to learn the scheme, so maybe it's a little rough, but then next year he's really kind of into it, and he's someone that you can have run on your team for the next five, six years, you know? He could provide some real stability, and in that meantime, then the Bears could really start to build that quarterback room, try to get some kind of quarterback development underneath him. I think that it could have been a project that had the Bears decided they want to put in the effort could have given them a pretty nice reward, to be honest. See, for me, I think that I agree with you. Pretty much everything you said I agree with. But my one, uh, the one thing that I, I do have to say about it is that if that was the case, if we were looking for something like that, I think I'd rather preferred we went with Cam Newton. Like I think that if we were going to bring in a guy to kind of 
be that secondary option maybe as you you know build along the quarterback you don't maybe want Nick Foles for that that much long of a time I think that Cam Newton would have made more sense there um, but Andy Dalton the reason why I have I believe that the Bears made the right decision here is that Andy Dalton obviously injury issues as well Nick Foles isn't you know he he, he knows his injury issues as well however I just think that Andy Dalton kind of has more injuries in bigger times. And another thing is that Bill Lazor has worked with both of them. And I kind of trust that his input was factored into the decision as to who to go grab. And ultimately, Nick Foles, I think, is just a, a, a good, was a good option for us over Andy Dalton. I, I like how comfortable he is with the team. And I liked seeing how good he was in the playoffs. It gives me a lot more comfort than someone like Andy Dalton who isn't that well versed in the playoffs yeah and, and maybe for you bring up a good point for the Bears for a team that have a little bit they have those playoff aspirations especially with those defense they kind of they should be that then it kind of makes more sense there I, I think that Andy Dalton could be Honestly, I'll say that I think he could have been a little bit better fit in the long term because obviously Nick Foles already has a shelf life. But I don't think that Nick Foles was a was a bad pickup at all. And I think honestly, if the Bears go out and draft a quarterback next draft, I'm perfectly fine with you know where the Bears are with this. You know, and and you Cam Newton, I remember Cam Newton was your guy. You know, back in like April May when he still wasn't signed, and and Andy, mm-hmm. Andy Dalton was kind of my guy. So you know, it's kind of take it as you will, but I think Nick Foles is kind of a, is interesting and weird middle ground that, you know, as a compromise, as a Bears fan, you know, I'll take it. You know, I, I think that yeah. he's obviously a mental step up from what the Bears had on the roster. He brings a lot more strength to that quarterback room. He makes it one of the best in the league, you know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I think that Nick Foles was certainly not bad. I think Andy Dalton would have been a bad pickup either. I'll just leave it at that. Mm-hmm. I think that Nick Foles is also someone, uh, another benefit that he is, is he's someone that I feel the most confident out of anyone in this list grooming a young quarterback. So if we do, he, if we do draft a quarterback in 2021, which we should, he would be a great option to help him learn Nagy's playbooks, you know, serve for a couple of games in the beginning of the season if he has to, kind of like Mike Lennon, but way better. And... I just feel confident with Nick Foles. I think he's a great teammate. I think, you know, even I, I talked about in the YouTube video, Michael Bennett says that he thinks Nick Foles is way better than Carson Wentz. He thinks that they made the wrong decision. And that that was a part of his reason for leaving, I believe, with the Eagles, was that he viewed Nick Foles as a better option than Carson Wentz. And that says a lot. Is it accurate? Probably not. However, it shows that he, his teammates his teammates like him a lot, and they, they trust in the guy. But let's go ahead and move on. The probably the 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 player that a lot of Bears fans wanted, Teddy Bridgewater. He ended up signing it was between the Bears and the Panthers, I believe, and he ended up signing with the Panthers for like a three year, twenty million dollar deal. I'm so happy that we didn't get Teddy Bridgewater. I think that Teddy Bridgewater would have been a huge mistake for our franchise. I, I think that his performance with the Saints was, you know, it was pretty good. That being said, it's really hard to identify how much of that was him. I think he still has a lot of the issues that he had early on in his career. I'm not extremely confident with him as a player. And he would have been a player that would have strung us along far enough that we probably wouldn't have drafted a quarterback next year. We probably would have stuck with Teddy Bridgewater. And the thing that I like about Nick Foles is he's either going to be horrible or he's going to be pretty good. And... As much as you want to say um, it's better to have a better quarterback, the reality of the situation is that a mediocre quarterback in the NFL could be the worst curse your team could possibly have. Look at, I mean, look at the Bengals with Andy Dalton, right? They they pretty much had him for like, what, like seven years and amounted to nothing? Yeah. And is it really worth it? I mean, you look at, you know, the Bills with Tyrod Taylor for a while, Um yeah, I'm 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 happy we didn't go Teddy B. I look, I'm I'm actually a, I'm a very big Teddy Bridgewater fan. I think that uh, he had one of the more unfortunate injuries, to be honest, in uh, in recent mm-hmm. NFL history. And I don't know how many people would agree with me on that, but 
he had a really good thing going there on the Minnesota Vikings, and it was actually quite fun watching him develop. We yeah, watched him quite recently just being in the Chicagoland area. Of course, the Minnesota division games get played quite often, even when they're not playing the Bears. And I, I like what I saw from Teddy Bridgewater. Um, got that injury, ends up playing the job with New Orleans. You know, goes out there, plays a couple solid games. Big fan of Teddy Bridgewater. I think he can still ball out and play well. Based off what you were saying, though, at the end there, though, I completely agree. Mediocrity in sports is one of the worst places you can be. Any Bulls fan will tell you that. This past 10 years have sucked. Mm-hmm. Um, not getting any top picks, and, but yet still not doing anything in the playoffs and just kind of being there. The big teams beat you around. Even you lose to the crap teams every now and then. But you win enough games where you kind of just you don't end up picking anyone good. Um, of course, there's a lot mm-hmm. more issues to the Bulls than that. But you know, back on the football side, the Bears have, are kind of in their own sense of, of mediocrity in, in a way. They're they're in probably the best spot they've ever been in recent memory. But you know, they haven't won a Super Bowl in forever. But yet, they never really get any super high picks. I mean, the most recent one was the one with Mitchell Trubisky, which was originally a three and trade mm-hmm. up to get a two. So yeah, I, I'm with you on that. I think that. You made a good point in that getting Teddy Bridgewater, unfortunately, would probably make the Bears stave off on ever having to not, not drafting a quarterback in any time soon, which is the complete wrong move. They can't do that. At least having Foles, if Trubisky doesn't play well and Foles' contract expires, the Bears have to do something at the quarterback. I think that's really the best part about the yeah. situation is it forces their hand to do something. They have to do something, mm-hmm. whether it's going out to make a major trade for a quarterback or drafting one, which is just the more logical, easier, cost-efficient way of doing it, they have to do something. Yeah, and it's one of those things where you you don't want to say that it's always... it's not. <laughs> maybe it sounds a little bit biased that we're saying the worst player is probably the better option, but when you think about this more long-term, you have to remember that Ryan Pace's job isn't to win this year. Ryan's Pace's job is to give Matt Nagy a competent team and a good team for the entirety of his coaching tenure. And one year in, honestly, in a COVID-ridden NFL season, this year is probably going to be extremely unorganized. We're not going to see the teams that normally are going to be doing good, doing good. We're not going to see the teams who normally do bad, do bad. It's going to be a really weird NFL season might as well use it as a time for you to just kind of get your shit together. And that's why I think the Bears are doing. I think I don't even think the Bears either were opposed to trying to draft a quarterback this year. I think that I'm sure they considered it. I'm sure they considered drafting for the future. And ultimately, the players that they saw coming in next year just outweighed what any sort of potential one of these, uh, one of the guys they could have gotten this year was. I mean, you got to think, Really, the only option they had was Jordan Love. Jordan Love, Jordan Love pale, fails in any sort of comparison to any of the first-round quarterbacks next year. I think the Bears are thinking a little bit more long-term than we might think. But I think that's really all that can be said for that. Now let's go to the bigger name option, Tom Brady. Many say that we don't, we didn't have the money to make this happen. We absolutely could have moved money around to make this happen. We wouldn't have the most complete team, the most holist team, but we would have been able to do it. It wasn't something that was completely off the table, right? Tom Brady was an option for us. Maybe not in his, in his mind, but it, he could have been an option. I'm happy we didn't sign Tom Brady as well. I think that Tom Brady, you know, probably a a really good quarterback, but what we would have had to do to get him would have been too much, especially for a player who really regressed this past season, had a lot of difficulty passing downfield, playing in a scheme that he's never played in before. Yeah, I think that Tom Brady in this instance, right, he's kind of like the better Nick Foles option, right, because he was going to be around for one year, two years max. Um, and then the Bears are probably going to have to do kind of like the same pattern. But that would have cut the Trubisky experiment done right there, right? That would have to be the end of it because there's no way Tom Brady is coming to sit on the bench for your team. So mm-hmm. Trubisky would have been automatically on the back burner. And I don't think the Bears have been ready to do that throughout any of the stretch. Uh, like we said last podcast, I think that the Bears 
really want Trubisky to start this year. They really want him to take that step forward, to take that step up and improve, and prove that he can be a starting quarterback in this league. And they're going to give him a, as many opportunities to do so. So I don't think the Bears really intended. They could have made it happen, like you said, but I don't think they intended on making it happen. And, and in the long term, I don't think it was a, a would have been a great move for the Bears. I think it, it would have brought a lot of attention to this team, but that's not really something the Bears struggle with. The Bears are a huge market. The city of Chicago loves them. No matter the year, no matter how mm-hmm. bad they are, the Bears are always the focus of sports in this town. And, you know, so the Bears didn't need that kind of extra attention that, you know, a team like Tampa Bay benefits from. And in the long term, yeah, I mean, who who would they have had to cut? What kind of what kind of extra moves would they have had to make that could be detrimental to them in the future? I mean, in this coming offseason, they're going to have to make some moves anyway. And, you know, we brought up the possible situation with the cap. Who knows? But that could have just made it even worse. So it was probably for the best that the Bears took a pass on Tom Brady. But, man, what an intriguing option. It's not too often you get a quarterback like his caliber to hit the the free agency market. One point I was going to make beforehand for all this is basically any quarterback that hits free agency is going to have their flaws, you know. Yeah. But Tom Brady is probably the one that comes with the least you know, with the only one being that he took a step down in his play in this past season. Absolutely. And then we'll, we'll just go into our final option, which was Philip Rivers. Um, I think Reese and I, uh, Reese, I, I believe you and I share the same opinion on this, that he's kind of at the same le- He kind of played at the same level as Trubisky last year, but their paths were kind of going in opposite directions where you might see some improvement of Mit- in Mitchell Trubisky. You'll probably see some, uh, regression from Philip Rivers. I'm not. A, I'm not super excited for his tenure with the Colts. No, I'm not either. I mean, you know, as a Chargers fan, I got to watch, and it was honestly beneficial. Looking back, it was great to be able to watch Philip Rivers for all those years. He was honestly a great quarterback. I think he's someone that probably deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, which is a tough argument to make for someone that never even went to a Super Bowl, went to an AFC Championship game, played mm-hmm. great with a torn ACL, kind of his heroic moment of the career, but. You know, this past season, man, he was he was not seeing defenders. He was not his typical self. He took a huge step back. I mean, it was clear. And he was playing at the level of Trubisky, but he was on the wrong side of that 30, that 30 barrier, mm-hmm. you know. So, yeah, there's well no uh, yeah, no, uh, no reason the Bears should have really brought him in. I, I think that Phil Rivers is a great, potentially a future Hall of Famer, but – I'll take Nick Foles over Philip Rivers at this point, you know, 10 times out of 10, to be honest, unfortunately. God, imagine three years ago saying that, (laughs) how times change in the NFL. I think that the Bears ultimately found themselves a pretty good quarterback option. And if you're really in touch with exactly how the Bears run their organization and what is desired out of all their players, I, 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 I believe most of you will come to the same agreement at uh, as us, even if you know you maybe fantasize about the 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 high end of Cam Newton, it, it could it could just as equally be his absolutely worst one in nine self that he was playing at most notably recently, or completely injured self. You just never really know. Um, so I think that's all that can really be said about it. No, the Bears didn't make this huge mistake by not signing Cam Newton. Should they have probably tried to sign him or at least throw him out of contract? I think so. You know, I, I I believe so. I think that he would have been a good addition to this quarterback room and gave us another intriguing option. But I'm not necessarily crying over the fact that we don't have him either. However, we still should sign uh, Larry Warford. But we're not going to really get into that on this episode. Yeah. One, one, la- <laughs> one last final topic that we have is the Bears officially refunded season ticket holders and you know as someone whose family owns season tickets i'm kind of sad by that because that means really that there's likely going to be no fans in seating whatsoever and that all even little bits of hope that i had that i would be able to see a bears game this season if uh receded i'm 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 very uh very sad not gonna lie yeah, it's it's an unfortunate year for that. I think that it's a responsible decision to do. I, I think this is something we all kind of saw coming. We just weren't didn't want to see the day where it was actually going to happen. You know, unfortunately for you, right? You kind of get to lose out, and obviously, I've benefited from it too. I mean, uh, been to quite a few games with you. It's been an mm-hmm. amazing experience each and every time that we've won. Um, with that being said, <laughs> uh, 
I, I think that this is just it's a simple reality what's going to happen. I think if they do sell tickets, maybe it'll have to be out of some corner, some kind of weird specialty package if they are able to get fans in the stadium where they can do it at like some kind of half or quarter capacity if they can even do something like that in the future. Maybe they just don't want to go through the deal of sorting out what ticket holders get to do that. They just want to be able to just kind of maybe sell, sell them a la carte, something like that, if that's even an option. But I think that the reality is there's not going to be fans, and, and we've seen this coming. I mean, this is nothing that really should take anyone off guard. Well, what I think is really smart of the NFL and something that's really going to help them is that they're actually it actually came out that the first like six, I believe six rows of seats – are going to be tarped off with uh, advertisers, so you can so big you know advertising companies can buy spaces to advertise their companies, kind of similar to hockey or baseball, mm. yep. uh, where you see where you see in the background. I think that's a great idea by the NFL as far as maintaining you know cap space. We talked about in a previous podcast. If you want to go check that out just how detrimental COVID could be to cap next year and how NFL, the NFL commissioner might need to actually bail teams out because they just aren't going to be able to put up the same cap numbers. And when the cap is normally rising 10 million every year, and then you randomly have a year where it may drop, you know, 30, 40 million, it could be detrimental on a lot of teams and cause a lot of damage. The bears could be one of them, but I think this is going to help out the NFL a lot. One of the biggest things that, you know, as a fan, you should hope for the NFL is that they make the most money as possible because, hey, if they're making money, that just means more benefits for us, right? That means they're going to try to uh, come come to us with more d- different types of merchandise and, and everything like that. So more, more options to choose from. And that also means that the continue- continuity, excuse me, of the sport uh, is just, is just going to continue. So I'm happy that the NFL is able to maintain their payroll and then also they're probably going to be able to, in some forms, pay stadium employees. I know a lot of teams are and then also just maintain their cap space. With that being said, too, if you all think that we should start a GoFundMe to buy some shot in hell, buy out an ad space in one of those, (laughs) if we should rally the troops on that one. Y'all just let us know and get to us on one of our platforms because we'd be more than willing to try to rent out some kind of big bare necessities banner right there on the 50 yard line, you know? So we can. Yes, sir. <laughs> maybe that will be in the works in my dreams, I guess, right? If, but, if you, if you happen to be a billionaire or know anyone who is a billionaire, please direct them to us. Uh, they can email us at our business email. It's in our description of every podcast. Um, also, just if you guys are looking to advertise your business, reach out to us. We'd be more than willing to help you advertise it on the show, uh, figure out some sort of beneficial rate or if you need some help with COVID, whatever, we'll figure it out. Um, we, we currently are not doing any sponsorships right now on the podcast. Uh, that will probably change in the future because we just... We want to get better equipment for you guys, truthfully. Some of the equipment setups that Reese and I are looking at are north of $700 per per setup. So with two people, do the math, it's $1,400, and then try to fit that in on a college budget. Not very easy. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it really, we're, we're planning on whenever we do start advertising on here. Um, just know that a, a very large portion of that is going to be put back into the podcast so that we can improve the experience for you guys. We're not selfish human beings. We care a lot about our listeners. Um, and we just want to bring you guys the best content available. Yeah, we care about our work. This is our pride and joy right here. This is, you know, our little thing that we've got going. So, yeah, we definitely want to keep making it, you know, better and better for you. Always trust that every every single podcast. And we hope that, you know, every time we get on here to record that we keep getting better and better. So that's what we love hearing you guys' is feedback, not only just for the positive reinforcement, but also for what we can do better as well. So, you know, if you guys want to go ahead and leave a rating, you know, just be honest. Of course, the five-star one helps the most, but we just love hearing what you guys have to say. You know, make sure you guys, the interactive interactivity is always nice, and it's always good to be talking to you all. So make sure you guys keep doing that in the upcoming YouTube videos and this podcast as well. Yeah, we have a we have eleven ratings, and 
um, 10 of the 11 are five star ratings, but it just so happened that one person left us a one star rating, which brought our net rating down to 4.5. But if you do the math, we're actually at a 4.9. So I don't know. I don't know how Apple, uh, concedes that a 4.9 is closer to a 4.5 <laughs> rather than a 5.0, but. We just we just have to deal with it. But yes, thank you guys so much for listening. We'll be coming back at you. We're sorry that we're actually probably going to miss our upload date tonight. Um, we're trying to do Mondays and Thursdays from now on, but there will be a Thursday podcast um, that we're going to be recording in two days. So just look out for that one. I don't. We don't know the topics yet. We're hoping some <laughs> topics come up because we're hitting like probably the driest part of the of the year before training camp. Um, where there's really no news. So just look out for another podcast coming very shortly and get used to this two times a week. We're, we're trying to give you the best content possible two times a week. Uh, we hope you guys appreciate it. Please, if you do like the show, like Reese said, uh, leave us a rating and review. Helps us out tremendously. Um, follow us on Instagram. Check out our YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube. And hey, you know, if you're if you're listening to the podcast right now, we would really appreciate it if you just took the podcast, there's a little share button in Apple Podcasts, share it with three of your friends who are Bears fans and, and try to get them to listen to the podcast. If everyone did that, it would benefit the show so tremendously and it, it would just be unbelievable if you guys could help us grow because, hey, it's really difficult to grow a podcast. It's got to be one of the most hard platforms to grow on. Bear down. Thank you guys so much. Bear down. <laughs>